Sure, fire and the transistor were pretty revolutionary inventions, but have you ever tried stripping insulation off a wire? Such a primitive tool is unacceptable in a modern society. Instead of that, let me introduce you to the greatest tool in my workshop, if not the greatest tool in all of history, the self-adjusting wire stripper. This is a tool that I'm super passionate about, and it's why I'm making this video to indoctrinate you, my audience, into a little cult of self-adjusting wire stripper enthusiasts. The issue with traditional wire strippers is that they're extremely physical to use. I'm not playing this up for the camera. It is difficult to remove these. You've got to squeeze down tight, wriggle it around, and then pull it off. After just a few wires, your hand will begin to cramp, and overall, the experience is just horrible. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. These little holes can be useful for trimming the length of bolts, but that doesn't make up for the overall poor performance as a wire stripper. In comparison, the self-adjusting wire stripper can take a wide range of wires from 10 to 24 gauge, and with just a simple squeeze of the handle, regardless of the wire size, the insulation glides off. Beautiful. Let's take a closer look at how we can practically use this tool. I insert the wire from the left hand side with the location of the cut being in the center of the jaws. If you're doing lots of the same cuts, then you can use this plastic stopper so that each wire is cut to the same depth. Unfortunately, this is the weakest part of the tool and as you can see on mine, it's broken off. I've also seen them break off numerous times on other people's tools as well. It'd be nice if it was built with a more robust material. Since the range of wires from 10 to 24 gauge is quite large, there's a tensioning nut on the side. You can adjust it tighter for thin wire and looser for thick. Although in my regular day-to-day -day use where I'm stripping, you know, 14 to 20 gauge wire, I rarely find a need to adjust this nut at all. If the tool isn't cutting for you, tighten the nut and loosen it if the jaws are cutting too deep into the wires. I don't have any 10 gauge wire on me to demonstrate, but here's the tool cutting some 12 gauge wire and then some 24 gauge. After each cut, it's important to ensure that the stripped insulation is removed from the jaws. If it's not removed, then the tool may fail to strip the next wire as the jaw mechanism can't clamp down correctly with excess insulation. I found pretty mixed results when trying to cut multiple wires at once. If they're flat like this, it can work pretty well, but loose bundles of wires have a mixed success rate. As a little aside note, a trick some people like to use is to strip the wires, but before pulling off the insulation, grab the insulation and twist the wires around. This is meant to be a little bit easier and prevent you from skewering your skin with the individual loose wires that can be surprisingly sharp. Personally, I don't really like this method. I just kind of grab the exposed wires and twist them without the insulation. But I thought it was a method that's worth sharing and maybe it's one that you want to try out. It could be a technique that really works for you. But anyway, going back to the tool, down the base there's a little blade for cutting wires. The remaining teeth are for crimping various connectors onto the wire. but they don't perform very well, and honestly, I find them more to be a novelty feature of the tool. Not every tool needs to be a jack of all trades Swiss army knife. So despite the feature, when it comes to crimping spade connectors, I much prefer using this specialized tool. So if you've enjoyed me getting up on a soapbox about this tool, Maybe in the future I'll make another tutorial video more detailed on how to use crimping tools like this one. Believe it or not, this love letter was not a sponsored video for Earl and Vice Grip tools, but there is an affiliate link down in the description. If I have converted you to my little cult, then you can buy these through the affiliate link that has no additional charge to you. I just get a small kickback to support the channel, but honestly, you can buy any brand of self-adjusting wire strippers. They all function pretty much the same as how I've shown in this video. 
This video isn't an endorsement of a specific brand, it's an endorsement of this type of tool. If you've made it this far in the video, it's probably worth discussing the elephant in the room. What is this thing and why is my studio such a mess at the moment? This is a small part of a much larger seashell sculpture that I'm creating for a music festival later this year. I'm going to light it up with thousands and thousands of LEDs. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with this video at all, but I just wanted to mention it. And if you want to stick around, maybe you can see a future video on how it's all being put together. But that's all for now. I hope I've saved you some frustration battling with the traditional wire strippers, and I'll see you in the next one.